I'm Sherry Tunney for the Marine Canvas Training Institute. Today we will demonstrate the making of a convertible top with side and aft curtains. We'll show you how to lay out the patterns to avoid waste and how to cut and sew them together quickly. Our goal, as always, is to demonstrate how to increase your profits through the efficient use of materials and labor, while at the same time turning out top quality marine products. Let's meet Don Wedge, president of the Marine Canvas Training Institute. Hi, Don. Hi, Sherry. Don, even though your students may master the skills that have made you a leader in the canvas fabrication industry, just how important is the material that they use? Well, Sherry, the materials that we use can make the difference of whether we turn out a product that we're proud of and that our customers have come to expect for quality. So where do you go to get this top quality material? Well, Sherry, we use mainly Unitex, who is a national supplier of Sumbrella and Gore-Tex thread. The reason we use Unitex is because they are good with their service and competitively priced. Tell us about Sunbrella. Sunbrella is manufactured by Glen Raven Mills in North Carolina. It's the material that's guaranteed for five years and it has a full color line so that we can match our customers' wants. And Gore-Tex sewing thread? Well, you use Gore-Tex sewing thread because it's the only thread I know of that is guaranteed for the life of the product. So it's safe to say that by utilizing Sunbrella material, Gore-Tex sewing thread, and the services of Unitex, you're pretty much guaranteed a top quality product. That's right, Sherry. Now we can go back to work. Okay. Good afternoon, class, and my friend Lisa over here. She's the one that's teaching me how to smile. This afternoon, what we're going to do is cut out a convertible top, side curtain, and an aft curtain. I need to do a little bit of explanation here. Uh, I think you'll remember that this morning we were out on the boat and we patterned a convertible top, side, and aft curtain. Uh, now we've suddenly switched to a model. Part of the reason we did that is because this is a training film and we have to get down to something that you can see on the table better. But all of the parts are the same, irregardless of whether we've done it on the boat or here on the table. For those of you that are brand new at this, I'd like to explain what these are so that you all understand what it is we're going to be cutting out. This is typically used on a small runabout boat. This is a convertible top, which is supported by a couple of frames and attached to a windshield. On the other side over here, you'll see a piece of clear vinyl that's zipped to it and snapped to the boat. That's called a side curtain. And this curtain back here is called an aft curtain, which zips to the top and snaps to the stern of the boat. It has a clear vinyl window sewed into it. Those are the parts that we're going to work on this afternoon. And we're going to cut out all of the parts for these so that when we go to the sewing table, they can all be done at one time. What I would like you to know is this, that using the Marine Canvas Training Institute's dot system of patterning, we are capable of taping up these frames on a boat and pulling every pattern for every part one trip. When we come back to the boat, or back to the shop, I'm sorry, we bring them back to the shop, we work the pattern, get them ready to cut out, cut them, sew them up, put them back on the boat, and they will fit. And you'll find that every zipper start, every zipper stop has been determined by the pattern. The length of the zippers has been determined by the pattern. Everything is all done on one pattern. It saves you many trips to the boat. A lot of you are used to making three and four trips to the boat. We do it one shot. So if I can get my friend Lisa and somebody else to get this model off of here, we'll see if we can't get to cutting this project out. While they're removing this, I'm going to tell you one more thing. You'll notice that we had a blue model and we have red that we're cutting out. Part of the reason for this is that we cut it out in red because it's easier to see on the cutting table as far as making a video. The end product will still come out the same way. Okay, we've got the patterns here that he was talking about that were pulled on the boat. This is the top panel of the convertible top. I have the pointy end or forward part of the boat at that end of the table and the stern at this end. I need the forward pieces. I just want to lay them out here so that you can see what they look like when they're all in their place. If you'll notice, this is in three sections here. When it was, the pattern was pulled, it was one piece, but we have split them apart because this is the 
center walkthrough that is going to get uh, zippers installed here so that the uh, customer can roll it back to the forward frame. We've split them apart because this section here is going to have a one inch overlap which will make a hidden zipper when it's all zipped together. Becky, why don't you stop for just a minute and explain to them why it is that you knew how to put this piece here and this one here as opposed to the reverse. Okay, if you remember before I said the pointy end of the boat was up there or the bow, that being the bow, that makes this the port side and this the starboard side. All pattern pieces are laid on the table face up so that they could be read. We do all our marking on the top side and it always indicates the outside of the boat, the other side being the inside. But Becky, you're not telling them these two crazy okay. words that we have. We have pout and we have sout. Pout stands for port out, sout is starboard out. And Sorry Becky, but I love to pick on her because she's my <laughs> daughter, okay? But it's one of the very important points in using this system of patterning. Take this away first. Now I'll leave you alone. Okay, sandbags? Sandbags. What I'm going to do first is cut out the top panel and the placement on the material. I'm going to put the forward edge towards the salvage that is away from me. The reason being, at the aft end, we need to get a full pocket. And it, this gives us the room to pull this pattern back and get that. Go ahead and get ready to cut. OK, on these, this pattern piece, there are edges that get cut with a hot knife and edges that get cut with shears. All seams that are going to be exposed get cut with the, the hot knife, which prevents raveling and stretching. The edges that get cut with shears are edges that get bound when we get to the sewing part. I said this on a previous tape, but we are cutting this edge with the hot knife. Uh, we have a foot on it that works so that you can cut on your table and not mar the table up. Learning to cut with a hot knife takes a little bit of practice so that you get the right speed. If you go too fast, you'll hear it rattling a little bit, which means that you're scarfing up the edge of the material. If you go too slow, it'll smoke real bad. So you will find a speed. You'll notice that there's very little smoke coming off of that, and it's making a nice, smooth, sealed edge. Also make sure that when you're, after you do all your cutting, that all marks get transferred onto the fabric. On this particular piece, the only thing that you have are center marks and zipper marks for the side curtains. You'll notice that in using the shrink wrap for patterning, for a patterning medium, we can lay it down on a material and we don't have to mark around the pattern. We just cut because the shrink wrap is stable enough that you can run the hot knife along beside it and it doesn't goof up the edge of the yeah. shrink wrap where with other patterning mediums that you could use, the it could either burn it or shrink it up. What she's going to do now is take the center line, which I think I've told you in previous tapes, so I'll remind you one more time that the only thing that's right on a boat is the center line. Everything else is goofed up. The day you learn that, you'll make a good looking product. So we build everything from the center line of the boat. So what she's done here is extend the center line across the top panel of the top onto the other material so that when she drags the top panel over onto it to make the shaped pocket to fit this top, she will maintain the same center line. Okay, um, I knew, need to explain one thing here. Um, prior to setting this up, we had a pattern piece that was missing, and I'm getting ready to do markings, and there's no markings on this pattern because we had to do a, a quick one for this demonstration. So what we are missing on this pattern piece is the zipper starts at the aft end, and the zipper starts for the aft curtain. So what okay, we need no. to let me interrupt here just a minute. One of the nice things about learning to pattern with the shrink wrap, as we do, you have a system that has started from the word go, and you stay with that system clear to the end. There are other ways of finding out where this is. 
and it's by using the dot system of patterning. Now, <clears throat> because we lost a pattern, and you're going to do this. So rather than to drive 40 miles back to the boat to pull a new pattern, here's what we do. We lost the top half of this pattern. What we're going to do is take the side curtain patterns, which, is a, which have already had the zipper start transferred to them. We're going to match up the dots on the top and the dots that are on the side curtain from the framework, and we're going to reestablish the zipper start. Now, this was totally unplanned, but it's the best thing that could ever happen because it will show you folks that you can make mistakes and solve your mistakes without going back to the boat. That's why we have developed this dot system of patterning because it saves us miles of traveling and saves us miles of mistakes. Okay, well all I'm doing is putting the uh, side curtain pieces up to it, matching the dots, and in this case we've already got our mark on the side curtain and I'm just going to transfer it through the, the clear because you can see through it. And marking it ZT for zipper start. Same thing we have to do on the aft curtain. We don't have to put it up there because a, a steadfast rule that we have is the zipper starts going to both port and the starboard always start one half inch from center. So in this case you could bring your, your uh, aft curtain panel up to it and transfer it if you want or you can just mark it because this is something that's always a constant. What I've done here is put a half inch mark each side of center and these will be your zipper starts. The reason being on an aft curtain, if they start in the center and zip out to the sides once it's on the boat, the customer always has a way of getting into the back end of the boat because they can undo the zipper this way. Just to reinforce what she said, ZT stands for zipper start and ZP stands for zipper stop. Why? Because both words start with S, so we couldn't use that, obviously. So we use P and T, or T and P. Okay. Zipper start, zipper stop. What I'm doing now is transferring those marks onto the material that we just cut out. Okay, if I pull the pattern away, you can see we've got zipper start in the aft end. On the port side, zipper start here, zipper start on the starboard side, and our forward marked on the forward edge. Don't you notch that? And that's it for this piece, other than, oh, excuse me. Other than your pocket. Other than my pocket. Okay. We've got our center line drawn, if you remember from before. What you do is come into the curved area, which is this here. Come back six inches on each side. Remember to keep your ruler perpendicular to the edge that you're marking from. Don't do it on an angle because it'll change the size of your pocket. We move this out of the way so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm taking the top panel, bringing it on top of our fabric, putting the center line that was chalked into the notched arrow and these edges back to the six inch marks that we made. This gives you the shape of your back pocket. What I'm going to do is cut up here. Now this edge can be cut with scissors. This will be a hidden seam once everything is put together. Part of the reason that she's leaving this pocket the full width of the top, which I know some of you are going to question that have been doing this for a few years, we establish the length of our pocket as we're sewing it onto the top because that's the easiest time to do it. So you'll find that the pocket is cut clear to the edge of the top. Then we'll establish the length as we sew it on. If I set these apart so that you can see them, this is what I just cut. Also at this time what I'll do, because this is the underneath of the pocket, we have to have straps that will hold this top back. The measurement that you use is you come up four inches from the 
cut edge here. You put a mark on each end. Come over four inches from that and into You can either set a template there if you want to, or you can eyeball it and cut it like this. If you take this and fold it in half at your notch, put your ends together, and all you have to do is cut your other side, the same as what you just cut out over there. And this is the pocket for the aft end of the top. a straight flap or fitted flap? Okay, her question was, are we making a straight flap or a fitted flap? And we, the, probably the reason she asked this question was, we want to drive it home to you when you use a particular kind of a flap, because that's a mystery to a lot of people. When you put any kind of a curtain onto a top that is not a straight down drop curtain, you will put a straight flap on. That means it's cut straight, sewed straight, and sewed on. So what you're doing is sewing a straight flap to a curved area, which is going to open that flap up to allow the next curtain to come up under it. Now, if you were doing this top with a straight down drop curtain and side curtains, then you would cut a shaped flap. And you use this curve right here on the waste material as the pattern to cut the shaped flap. And this is real important, so listen to me real close. Do not start using this top as the pattern to cut a shaped flap because as you pull it back more than one time, it gets progressively smaller all the time. So you use this edge as the shape for that shaped flap. Today we're going to do it with a straight one. When we get to doing a bimini top later in another tape, then we'll be doing a shaped flap. Just remember, straight down curtain, shaped flap, all other curtains, straight flat. Okay, the next pieces we're going to cut out will be the forward section that is the walkthrough section. I'm going to save this material because we'll be needing to get some straight pieces out of it later. So I'm just going to pull the roll down and do the front section, and we'll come back to this later so that you can see where I'm getting my information from. This is the forward section. Flip all your pieces upright so that you can read all the, all the writing. I'll cut them up. I guess I can cut them up here so I can reach. Okay, what you need to do is place these far enough apart so that on your center section here you can get a one inch overlap. What this will create when they're zipped together is a zipper that is over like this so that you don't see it. Becky, this is another detail that many people get lost on. So if I may interrupt just a minute. When we patterned this convertible top on the boat, we did not pattern three individual pieces. We patterned one piece from one side of the boat to the other and from the windshield to the mid frame. This was originally pulled as one pattern like this. If you look on the demo that we had sitting up here, it has a walkthrough flap that has a two inch overlap over the zipper to keep it from leaking. We will get that two inch overlap now. It takes one inch on each side, but it was pulled as one pattern. We determined where the zipper was going to be in the pattern. When we lay it up on the material here, all we really have to do is lay this so that these are exactly one inch apart. What we usually do, if you want, big sandbag this one and put a mark one inch each side of that. This is the quick and dirty way so that you end up using less material and you remember to get it done. Too many times you lay it up here and just cut it out. Now if you slide this pattern up to that mark, you have now got your one inch overlap for your zipper. That way you saved two movements because you're going to make one cut to do two things. OK, 
Okay, and cutting these out, again, you have edges that require a hot knife edge and edges that require a shears cut. This edge back here, which gets sewn to the body of the top, will be a hot knifed edge because that will be an exposed edge. These edges along here, across the front where the snaps are, those all get cut with the shears because they are a bound edge later on. While she's cut, cutting that, let me explain these little triangles that you see laying up here on the corner. They are not part of the top. Again, when we patterned this project, we patterned the whole thing all at one time. This is the edge of the top right here, and this is the next snap down below it, which supports the side curtain. Part of the reason we left that on there was so that we would have something to compare to on the side curtain as to how they blend together. This will not be part of this top. But this, again, is one of the deals that you can get away with when you're using shrink wrap to pile up different snaps to know that you have not made a mistake. And if you have made a mistake, no sweat, like I am right now. If you've made a mistake, you can solve the problem. Lisa, the only reason I'm sweating so bad is I'm having so much fun. <laughs> I've cut out the first section here before I totally move it away from the working area. Make sure that you mark all your snaps zipper starts and stops, and what piece you just cut out. This is the pout piece. See how good she's getting it right and pout upside down for these cameras? There's the piece we just cut out. Just pay particular attention to how she's cutting this center panel out. It's one inch wider on each side than what the pattern is. This makes a nice overlap panel for the zipper. And for you people that have been doing it the other way of folding a piece in half and making a hairy flap that you sew on that looks ugly, this makes a nice clean job out of it. This is kind of a takeoff on production work that we've made work with custom work so that we get a nice clean job out of it. I've got my snap edges along the forward edge marked. The zipper stops for the center walkthrough. The zipper will go from this point to this point. The center notch marked. And that should be it. This is what this pattern looks like cut out. The other piece left to cut for the front would be the starboard side. I've cut this already with a hot knife here, so all you have remaining is your shears that need to cut the bound edges. Remember that little triangle over there is just a reference point in relation to the side curtain. We showed you on the original tape where we pulled the pattern and worked the pattern, we showed you the relationship of that triangle to the next piece. But see, these are the ways that you solve your mistakes as you go along. Now, I know that most of you people don't make mistakes, but we're pros at it. So we have to figure out some way to cover ourselves. This is the starboard side that we just cut out. My zipper stop. And zipper stop for the walkthrough, my snap edge, and identifying what piece I have. Dawn, if you could lay that over there with the other and bring us back the aft. You want the aft half to yeah. do that pocket? We've got one more thing to go with this top. We have to cut the pocket for the mid frame. And we use the leading edge of the aft half of the top as the pattern to cut that. And that's that edge right up there. Why is it that? It says Sout, Pout, and FWD for forward. You want this? She wants this. Stay out of the way, Dad. Okay. 
I'll move this so that you can see the cut pieces. What I'm doing is bringing the center mark and the center notch that we previously cut in the top panel, putting it over the center chalk line that we extended originally. Here's another place for some confusion, okay? This is kind of an arbitrary call, so I'm going to explain it. Many of you that have been to my classes already call me and you say, well, you told me to make the pocket for the center frame 32 inches. Well, I did. But here are the rules. When you're putting a center pocket on a frame, whether it be for a bimini top or a convertible top, <clears throat> Try to have it wide enough to support the frame, but don't get involved out into the curved area on the framework because you haven't lived until you try to sew that down. The reason we usually use 32 inches is because usually there's that much room from, this, from the 16 inches each side of center, and so we just kind of made that the standard. But on a very small top like this, she's probably going to cut it down to what, about 16 inches? This is 14. See, that was a good guess. Go for it. Okay, what I've done is I've marked on my top here where I want my uh, pocket to finish. I extended it here. I cut the edge to give me the shape of the forward edge of the uh, framework. The next thing you do is measure six inches from this cut edge into the material so that you can get a distance for the pocket forward. If you connect those lines, that gives you a curved edge here, which lays up to this edge, and a straight edge here, which when sewed, sewed, top sewed, and sewed down in place will give you a straight edge across the back. And the reason I'm cutting outside of my hash marks here is because I'm going to turn in a half inch seam allowance at the sewing table. And while she's cutting that out, let me explain why it is this edge here was cut straight. When it's sewed down to the top here, it's a lot easier to sew a straight seam on a pocket than it is a curved seam. In this particular case, it's no big problem to have a straight seam. The other thing that happens is when we put the zippered pockets in, it makes it easier to sew the zipper in. Now, the zippered pockets are something we're going to do on another tape, but we usually put zippered pockets on all of our products anymore because we make more dollars doing it. Okay, we've still got an aft flap to cut. Uh, side reinforcement uh, pieces that go down the side of the top. So what I need to get here is a measurement, which is along the side here. You take your longest measurement. If you look out here to this edge, it's only 11. But if I come in here 2 inches, which is where that, that reinforced flap is going to finish when it's sewed on, you're looking at 14. So I'm probably going to cut mine 16 inches to give myself a little bit of leeway. When you sit down, you don't have to worry about trying to get something lined up. So you've got 16 inches here, and you've got whatever the distance is on the forward piece that we cut out originally. I'll show you what that measurement is so that you understand. Okay, this is the, this is the side here that's going to get sewn like this. I mean, you can lay it up here in this way if you want to to get a measurement. You know, in this case, I would probably cut something that's 35 inches, or you can take the addition of this 16 plus whatever you pick here, and that would be what you need. So I'm going to need two pieces, 35 inches long by two and a half inches wide. Now I've still got a straight line here from when I cut my pocket out, so I'm just going to extend that so I can see what I've got here. And again, we're not being as wasteful as it may look like except for the purposes of this video, okay? Because we would never do what's happening down there. The reason we're doing this is, is we're learning the hard way on videos that that shine down there goofs you up. So we're cutting out of the middle, middle of the material because the cameraman got on us a while ago about that shine. Otherwise, we would be cutting down in here. But I want you to understand why we're doing this. Because part of the game here, folks, is teach you the other part of the game is make money. And you don't make money by wasting that much material. But when you're doing videos, you have to do it sometimes. I think I probably just upset the producer, but he said we were supposed to have fun doing this, so we are. 
Right, Don? Right. <clears throat> While she's cutting this, one of the other things we have to have, we have to have some reinforcements for the center panel. We have to have vinyl for the leading edge of the top to reinforce that for the snaps. Because I think we've told you again in former tapes, but I'm going to remind you again, acrylics will not support snaps. So you have to reinforce them with some kind of a vinyl. OK, I also need for this piece a flap across the back. If you take a measurement from the finished edge here to the finished edge here, that will tell you what you need in length. Halfway to center is about 22 inches. I will probably cut one that's 45, because then I'm going to cut off the rest when I go to lay it up and sew it, and that edge will be bound. Be generous. Right. So I've got a piece that's going to be 45 inches by 5 inches. The 5 inches being that you're going to take the 5 inches, fold it in half, and edge stitch it. And then that will be your You want to show flap. them the old carpenter's trick of cutting the 5 inches back? All right. Because some of them didn't buy that other tape and they lost out, so now we got to show them on this one. But when you have to cut multiple pieces that are a certain width all the way through, if your tables are cut nice and square like ours and nice smooth edges, you can figure out the length that you need here. And she's using her fingers and the ruler as a scribe which is a lot quicker, I think you have to admit, than looking for a straight edge, which I think we probably threw under the table somewhere. Once you practice this a little bit, it's real easy to come up with these straight lines that you need. See, we've got that cut out while you're looking for your straight edge. Here you are, Don. OK, now we have to cut the vinyl reinforcing that's going to go along the forward edge of the forward panel, which is the snap edge. A lot of times we use a roll of 30 gauge roll vinyl that's pre-cut into two inch wide rolls. That way we can cut it off and lay it on the underside for our reinforcing. Some parts of the country, having clear vinyl along the front edge is uh, not very nice looking to some of the customers. They don't prefer to see through it because it's such as in Florida, you get a lot of uh, moisture build up behind the clear vinyl and it creates black mildew. So a lot of places you have to use any kind of uh, vinyl that you have in your shop, scraps of anything that you can cut into two inch wide strips. Naturally we would use, if we were doing this, something that would complement this either black or a burgundy, but what it's going to do is be placed along the edge the same way as the clear vinyl so that you have a vinyl reinforced snap edge. So if I go ahead and cut this for these sections, I'm cutting the, these a little bit longer than what I need so that when I lay them down I don't have to worry about getting exactly on and coming up short at the other end. And this is for the other piece. And also, Becky, remember, we need two pieces for the sides here because when we sew the zipper on this with a roll-up walkthrough, we have to put two snaps up here to store that in the open position. So again, you have to reinforce the two sides of the walkthrough. OK, this should uh, conclude all the pieces we need to cut for the convertible top. We've got side curtains and aft curtain to cut out. Should we lay this up real quick so they can see the relationship okay. of everything? Dawn, if you want to pull that back that way, pull the flap back. This is a straight flap. Pull it clear to the edge of the table. Then bring your pocket. And so that they can see it, because they probably can't see this where we can. We'll separate these. Pull the pocket back there, Dawn. Here's the pocket for the center. And hopefully you can see the relationship of all the parts as they're going to be put together. And that completes the cutting of the convertible top. OK, now we can go ahead and cut out a side curtain. What we're going to do is we're going to cut out one side curtain out of clear vinyl 
just in the interest of time, because you're all smart enough to know that if you've cut one one way, you cut the other one the identical way. So we're not going to take the time to cut two side curtains for today. We're also using up one of our pieces of scrap vinyl for it, <clears throat> but we would be pulling the roll down the table, laying the pattern on it, and again, the basic rules apply. This one happens to be big enough for both, so maybe they're going to cut them out both. I don't know. Anyway, look at the pattern. It says pout, S slash C, which stands for port outside side curtain. Right? Right. This stands for south, starboard outside side curtain. This way, you're going to cut your glass face up with the pattern face up. And the reason we do it in this sequence, again, you could do it the other side up and nobody would ever care except you when you couldn't clean up your mess. So we cut it with the pattern face up and the material face up and we identify the clear vinyl using a china marker and we will write on it pout S slash C if that applies. And that's written on the outside of the curtain for purposes of identification. For purposes of putting the zippers on the curtains, we'll do the marking for the zipper start and the zipper stop on the inside of the curtain. Why? Because when we sew the facings on the curtain, the facings are sewed on the outside of the glass, and then they're bound. Then the zippers are sewed on. If we were to put the zipper ident identification start and stop on the outside of the curtain, then we couldn't clean the mark off. So let me repeat it. We're going to put the identification of the curtain on the outside of the clear vinyl using a china marker. We're going to put the zipper start and the zipper stop on the inside of the curtain so that we can clean it off later. You'll also notice here that we have already established the length of our zippers for all of these different curtains. Because again, using this dot system of patterning, we had a perfect place to measure for the length of the zipper on these curtains. We measured it along the edge of the glass from the start to the stop and wrote it on the pattern. This way you can pre-cut your zippers ahead of time so that when you sew them on the curtain, they will get from the start to the stop and they will be the proper length. And you all know what happens when you try to second guess a zipper. If one half of the zipper has got 57 teeth and the other half of the zipper has got 53 teeth, you know what you got. You got a big old hairy wrinkle. So we cut our zippers. If it calls for a 58 inch zipper, then both halves are exactly 58 inches long. And they will get from the start to the stop. And these girls almost got done before I did explaining. These curtains are already cut out, ready to go to the sewing table, except I just want to mention that we do, not, we do not worry about any facings for these with the exception of the bottom edge where the snaps go. We will cut some of the finished material for the top as a facing for the bottom edge. The top edge and the aft edge will be done with flat binding, which we'll be sewing, showing you when we get to the sewing sequence. But that's okay. all there is to cutting out side curtains. I want to show you two ways of doing the uh, fabric that gets cut along the snap line. The two ways being, one is cutting a straight strip and laying it to the edge. But what that will require when you go to sew it down is putting a pleat where you make a turn. The other way is to take that side curtain, lay it on your fabric like this, and if you draw around the edge. What, what I was talking about before with the straight piece, if you're sewing down here, when you get to this point where you've got to turn, you're going to have to put a pleat in this corner. So another way of doing it is to draw out a fitted facing, which will get laid on top, and then you have a nice, a, mo a more neater looking uh, border for your snaps. Pull this away. If you mark up two and one half inches from here all the way down, that gives you a place to cut with your scissors. That will be your turn edge, your half inch turn edge, which will give you a, a nice, neat 
uh, seam when you sew it down. All I'm going to do is, is uh, cut where I've marked here, and I'll show you the difference when I lay them on there, what they, where you'll see that dart will have to be at the turn. I lay this on here, you'll be able to take a look at that. That looks like. Where's okay. the other side curtain down? We'll show them. The show them a straight one. A straight one. What I would do would be take a measurement, and I would probably call this 42 inches by two and a half. I'll lay this up on the other side curtain so that you can see what I'm talking about where you would have to put a dart in or a pleat in the fabric if you were sewing it down. If you lay both side curtains up here and I lay this edge along here, you can see in the side curtain where the curtain goes up like this. When I'm sewing it down, what I'm going to have to do if I were to sew this is I would have to fold this and do something like this. That's the difference in the two. This makes for a nicer looking job. Very little more time, first class quality. Okay, the side curtains are cut out. We've got an aft curtain to cut out. Should we reverse that roll, Becky? Aft curtain gets laid on the fabric, face up, so that you can read all of your writing. Sandbag it in place. And here again, we've got a small pattern, so you can see everything at one time. Uh, but if this was a bigger one, you'd have a lot of panels sewn together. In this particular case, all edges can get sewn, or can, excuse me, can get cut with the shears. All of these edges will be bound, so nothing at this point has to be cut with the hot knife. And again, all of these little triangles that are hanging out on the corners are just reference triangles because they're the snap from the preceding piece that attaches to this. But they were a reference point for us to double check our pattern as we were working it to make sure. Because the way we work our patterns, if we've made a mistake, we find it long before we get to cutting the finished material. And Dawn, if you would, right around behind you is a push pin. If you would grab that for me right there under that spool of thread. Because Becky's about to show them, I hope, aren't you, Becky? <laughs> you'll, no <laughs> you'll notice here that we have a, pa a window marked out on our pattern where we want clear vinyl sewed into this aft curtain, okay? And the vinyl has to be marked on the inside of the curtain. Now, how do you get that mark to the inside of the curtain, which is on the underside of this material? Well, the easy way is to take this push pin, stick it through the corner. It makes a very small hole in the material. Turn the pattern over and just put a little dot there with your soapstone, and now you've transferred the corners of that window to the inside. I, I know this sounds stupid, but a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to get that mark to the inside. And this is the quick and dirty way to get a perfect corner right on that window. We use these push pins not only for this, but we carry them on a pin cushion that we put on our wrist like our grandmas used to do. Because when we're patterning a job on a boat where we have an existing top and we want to pattern an aft curtain, they work very well to hold the shrink wrap to the top by pushing the push pin 
through the stitch hole in the material on the top. And it does not lead, leave an offensive hole that will leak. Plus, they're just short enough and sharp enough that they get your attention when you lean on them. OK, I've marked my zipper starts, zipper stops, snap lines. Up here at the top, you've got zipper start for the zippers that go this way, where the aft curtain zips to the convertible top. I've got uh, center referenced here with a line. I always get in the habit of every center mark, even if I need it or don't need it, to notch it so that anybody else in the shop will always know it. If they see a notch, that means center mark. What she's trying to tell you here, folks, is this. Marine Canvas Training Institute has developed a system of patterning, working the pattern, cutting it out in such a way that you can save material and make money. So you can't be changing the system. You have to stay with it from beginning to end. But it will help you make a lot more money than you've been making. OK, what I've done is I've flipped the aft curtain over. You can see the dots that we transferred to the underneath side, which will indicate the corners of our window. And all you need to do it is draw between the dots. Because all of our sewing will be done on the underside. If you put all this on the other side, then you just got to transfer it anyway. OK, if you cut your glass for this, get a piece of glass that's larger than the area. And I always cut it down a little bit so that you don't have bulk hanging around you when you're at the sewing machine. The only other thing that this would need to have is on the snap, snap lines going down the side of the boat and across the back of the boat is vinyl reinforcing again. You can use this again like we did on the side curtains or any type of clear vinyl that you have in the shop that's scrap that you want to cut up. And then we're ready to sit down and sew. And then this, this down here, this is the snap edge. This edge and this edge are the edges that connect the side curtains to the aft curtain and the aft curtain to the top. Those we have learned that it works a lot better to stabilize those by sewing flat binding on them flat than binding them, which we'll show you again when we get into the sewing sequence. Girls, I think that's all we can do on this, isn't it? We got it all cut out, ready to sew up. So this concludes the part where we cut out a convertible top side and aft. I'd like to thank the girls for helping me. And my favorite student, Lisa, I'd like the camera to shoot her just so everybody knows what she looks like. Thank you very much, Lisa. <laughs> We'd like to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors, the people from Glen Raven Mills Incorporated, who manufactures Umbrella, Unitex Incorporated, a nationwide distributor, and W.L. Gore & Associates, using creative technologies worldwide in the making of Gore-Tex sewing thread. Join us again when we show you how to increase your profits and save time and effort with the Marine Canvas Training Institute programs. Sherry, you know you've done a fantastic job, but you know what? what? I'm sick of working. Let's go fishing. Okay, Don. Let's fish. <laughs>